Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Jeffords, an orthopedic spine surgeon at Resurgeon Spine Center in Atlanta, Georgia. If you are watching this video, you are potentially a surgical candidate for what we call an anterior cervical discectomy infusion, otherwise known as an ACDF, a surgery that is 95% successful for relieving arm pain caused by a herniated disc in your neck. An ACDF is one of the most common spinal procedures performed. The surgery is done to remove disc material that may be pressing on the spinal cord or on one of the nerves in your neck. The disc is removed to relieve the spinal cord or nerve compression to relieve the neck and radiating arm pain. Once the disc is removed, either a bone graft or fusion device is put in place of the disc, supported with a titanium plate, and over three to six months the bones will fuse together solidly. What I would like to do in this video is describe the surgical procedure, talk about what steps you will take in preparing for the surgery, what will happen during the operation, and what you can expect in your recovery. After you've been evaluated by your surgeon and it has been determined that you are in fact a surgical candidate, you will probably want to discuss the next steps with your family and possibly pursue a second opinion. Once you have made the decision to proceed with the surgery, the first thing you will want to do is to schedule a date for your preoperative consultation. It is during this session that you will have the chance to meet with your surgeon and staff, ask any questions you may have, and then sign the consent form for the surgery. At this time, you will be prescribed any medications for postoperative care and may undergo additional preoperative tests. This may include a chest x-ray, EKG, and blood work. You will check into the hospital or surgery center the morning of your surgery. Your anesthesiologist will bring you into the operating room and put you to sleep for the operation. There are usually two nurses in the OR assisting your surgeon with the procedure. Your surgeon will make a small incision in the front of your neck, usually about an inch long, just to the left of your Adam's apple. After carefully moving the muscles to the side, retractors are put in place to expose the front of the spine. Your surgeon will then remove the herniated disc material and any bone spurs that may be putting pressure on the spinal cord or nerve roots. Your surgeon will then clean out the disc space between the two vertebrae and place some bone graft material and perhaps a fusion device in the disc space to aid in fusing the two vertebrae together. Once the graft material is in place, a small titanium plate is placed over the bones and secured to the vertebra with screws. At that time, a small drain may be placed in the incision to prevent any bloody drainage collecting at the incision site. If you have a drain, it will probably be removed the next morning. The incision is closed with resorbable stitches that are placed beneath the skin. A soft collar may be placed on your neck at the conclusion of the surgery. A typical ACDF procedure lasts approximately one to three hours, depending on the number of discs to be fused. Immediately after surgery, you'll be taken to the recovery room for one to two hours while the anesthesia wears off and your vital signs are checked. Afterwards, you may be discharged home or you may stay overnight in the hospital and be taken to your room where you can visit with your family. Your surgeon will speak to your family while you're in recovery and give them an update on your procedure and condition. The nurses will get you out of bed after surgery and you should be strong enough to walk and climb stairs immediately. If you have a drain, the surgical dressing will be changed and the drain removed the morning after surgery. A new dressing will be placed and stay on for approximately one to two weeks after your surgery. In most cases, you may shower over this dressing. Most patients are able to go home either the day of or the morning after surgery. Occasionally, some patients will stay an extra day. You may ride in a car or airplane upon your release from the hospital. You will be given pain medication and a muscle relaxant to help control postoperative pain and spasms. Please ensure that you do not drive or operate any heavy machinery while on this medication. Approximately two weeks after your surgery, you'll have a postoperative visit with your surgeon and your wound will be checked you will need to wear a soft collar for at least two weeks after your surgery. You may return to sedentary office or desk work one to two weeks after your procedure. If your job demands that you are involved in heavy lifting or frequent bending or climbing, you should wait at least three months before returning to this type of activity. You can return to moderate duty in four to six weeks. Typically, your surgeon will see you again to check on your recovery process six weeks after the surgery and then again at three to six months. When you return for your post-op visits, an x-ray will be taken to check on your fusion. Complete fusion is usually seen to be solid at three to six months. You may resume sporting activities such as golf or tennis three months after your surgery, provided that the fusion is solid on the x-rays. As with any surgical procedure, there are inherent risks. There are three different categories of risk that arise from the surgical procedure. Number one is risks of anesthesia. Number two is risk of things that can happen during the operation and number three are risk of things that can happen after the operation. Risk of anesthesia are rare, but include the possibility of allergic reaction to medications, possibility of seizures, heart attack, stroke, or death. 
Fortunately, the incidence of these risks is extremely low. The next category of risks are things that can happen during the operation. This includes the risk of injury to the breathing and swallowing tube, risk of injury to the spinal cord or nerve roots, or other structures in the neck. The most feared complication by patients, of course, is risk of injury to the spinal cord or nerve, and the risk of that happening is extremely low. One in 5,000 is the reported incidence in studies that have been done. The final category of risk are things that can happen after the surgery. These risks include the possibility of infection. There's about a 1% risk of that. There's risk of the bone graft not healing completely, and that has about a 5 to 10% risk. Other risks include risk of continued pain. For arm pain, there's about a 5% risk. For neck pain, it's about a 15 to 20% risk. As I mentioned earlier, the ACDF is one of the most common spinal fusion procedures performed in the United States today. Very rarely do patients experience any complications. Surgical intervention should always be the last resort, but when all other treatments have failed, this surgery can often provide significant relief of neck and arm pain from a herniated disc. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You may have additional questions, and if so, you may want to consult with your surgeon.